Are adhesives really as strong as manufacturers say they are? I get asked this question a lot and I wanted to find out for myself. So I built this Strength Tester 2000, which is a lot better than the ST1000, which if you saw in that video, had me basically lifting 100 pounds of plates and hanging it from my garage. This is a lot safer for my, for my feet and a lot more accurate because I get a readout of the actual results. Now, step one was to get a ballpark figure of what the layout was gonna be. Damn. Once I had that information, then I could figure out whether the pipe that I had on hand was gonna be enough for the uprights. I had some one inch metal laying around, so I did a cut on that and then hammered out a flat side so I could bend it around a one inch bar. Why did I bend it around a one inch bar? Well, most adhesives are rated so many pounds per square inch. So I thought, well, let's take out the math of having to reduce or subtract or divide the surface area of what I'm testing. I just put it into let's one inch squares. That's not bad. And then what we have to do is we have to bend two U's one inch thick. I don't like that because you see the ridge I'm getting there. I don't like that. I found that I had to start it by hammering it because just putting it in the vise would give it this curl and that I really didn't like that at all. I used the vise to get it a really good flattening as opposed to just hammering it out completely. Take that off, right? Now, back it off. Okay. Okay. That will work. Because that is not budging. Oh, whoa. don't break it. Starting to take shape. Look at that. That's what I meant. It'll hold a, a one by in there. Okay, one. Let's keep this on hand as a, as a template because that worked out really well. But I didn't want to go too fast because I don't want to crack the metal. It's already weakened already with my hammering and heating and changing the shape of it. Don't miss. Then I not only use the angle grinder to cut the pipe, but I also use the angle grinder to cut my one inch bar. I'm using metal in this case. Eventually we'll have one inch plastic pieces or one inch wood pieces, one inch pine, one inch oak. Then we can strength test different adhesives, whether it be wood glue or other types of epoxy. Then I bolted it to this angle iron and created this nice little stand. And I also bolted on a stand for this nice Nextech DFS XL3K, which is a push-pull tester.
Then with the bottle jack, I simply put it in the rig and start applying pressure. I want to thank the folks from Next Tech for providing the gauge, but they also provided the hardware for the pull test. We might be incorporating that in the future. I like it because it's easy to use and like also that. has a max setting. So that's what we're going to be using for ours. We're going to see the point of failure for all our different adhesives. Okay, so we can do, we're going to set that to peak. So now we're at peak compressive force. We've just zeroed it out, and now we're ready to test. When something flies off the handle, it's not good. So what we're going to do is, we're going to add a safety. If it's going to fly, it's not going to fly any further than that length right there. Okay. And it records the actual point of failure. We picked it 192, 191 pounds. If you're an adhesive manufacturer and you'd like to see your adhesive put through the paces of the ST2K, drop me a line and we'll be featuring it in an upcoming video. Disclaimer, it's not the most scientific. I'm not calibrating in between, but I am getting close to what I'm seeing as the point of failure and it will allow me to compare the different strength of adhesives in a more controlled environment without risking injury of my feet and toes. I hope this has been mildly entertaining or informative. For more videos like this one, click the image on your screen now, and don't forget to subscribe to Field Guided DIY. I'll see you in the next video.